Yeah, it seems like every time Jimmy Butler activates playoff Jimmy. It's not a thing. It's not. I just, I just, I just be hooping. Or, I mean, every time Jimmy just be hooping in mid-April to late May, the internet digs up the story again about how Jimmy Butler is actually Michael Jordan's son. And you'd think by now that this story would be dropped due to the fact that there's no concrete evidence to prove it, no 23andMe to help us out here, no statement from either MJ or Jimmy, no... Two hours later. Okay, you get the point. Anyway, I'd like to think that because there are none of these things, that this story would fade away with the rest of the internet conspiracies. But dang it, no matter how reasonable it seems to drop it, every time Jimmy Butler does stuff like this on the court and continues to walk around every day of his life looking like this, the story is going to live on. And so allow me to extend it another day because we are really going to get to the bottom of it. At least, that's the goal anyway. Now, I think the most appropriate way to lead into this story is to start with why we are even talking about it, and that's because Jimmy Butler has looked like the second coming of Michael Jordan at points throughout the 2023 playoffs. At the time of this video, Butler and the Heat are on to the Eastern Conference Finals, and it took a Herculean effort from him in the first round to help them get there. His numbers at a quick glance in that first round series against the Bucks. 37.6 points per game on a blistering 59.7% from the field to go along with 6.7 rebounds and 4.8 assists. But just how good was this playoff series from Butler when compared to the all-time greats at his position of small forward slash shooting guard? Well, to find this out, I googled best playoff series of Michael Jordan's career and did the same thing for LeBron James and Kobe Bryant as well. The consensus best playoff series for MJ was the 1993 NBA Finals against the Suns, known now as the series that the Bulls packed one suit when they went back to Phoenix for game six, up three games to two. So I just say, look, man, I don't know about you guys. I'm only packing one suit. We're going back to win one game. I'm not going there to play two games. Their 4-2 series win capped off the Bulls' first three-peat before MJ's retirement. The heavy favorite for LeBron was the 2016 NBA Finals. The man averaged a near triple-double and led his team on the most historic comeback against the team with the best record in NBA history. And fan-sided argues that Kobe's 2010 Western Conference Finals against the Phoenix Suns was Bryant at the height of his powers. He eclipsed 30 points in five of the six games and was extremely efficient with an impressive overall stat line. Now, if we were to rank each player's overall performance in these series by game score, which uses the following formula to measure a player's entire modern box score and as a result provides a numerical value to measure a player's productivity for a single game, LeBron's 2016 finals would come in fourth with an average game score of 26.5. Kobe's 2010 Western Conference Finals comes in third at 28.8. MJ's 1993 NBA Finals is second at 29.6. And that means that at the top of the list is Jimmy Butler's 2023 first round with an average game score of 30.4. For reference, a game score of 40 for a single game is outstanding and 10 is average. 
Jimmy Butler's 56-point game four on nearly 68% field goal shooting against Milwaukee ranks as the greatest individual playoff performance in Miami Heat history with a game score of 48.2. So the fact that this man averaged a game score of 30.4 for this series is beyond impressive. And sure, Giannis going down with an injury in Game 1 altered the trajectory of the series and provided a mental boost to the heat and mental drain on the Bucks that cannot be quantified statistically. But it's not like Miami has played with their full squad during these playoffs either. Because before halftime in the same game that Giannis went down, the Heat lost their third best offensive weapon by points per game and their best three-point shooter by percentage in Tyler Hero after the man dove for a loose ball and broke his hand. Hero even proceeded to play after the freak injury and attempted a shot. Hey. Shooter's gonna shoot no matter what, I guess. Not only did Jimmy proceed to have the series performance that he did after Hero's injury, but after Victor Oladipo's non-contact knee injury that turned out to be a torn patellar tendon in his left knee at the end of a blowout in Game 3 as well. So there's only one possible, logical conclusion to these events, and it's that Jimmy must have went out and purchased the biggest backpack they sell at Dick's Sporting Goods and said, everybody in. I'm carrying us there. And to make matters even more challenging, Giannis returned in game four and posted a triple double. I mean, I know the man can bully dudes, but now he's throwing no look passes to his bigs on the pick and roll, like what? Well, while this may have shook me as the viewer, it definitely didn't shake Jimmy Buckets. And neither did Drew Holiday. Holiday has been acknowledged countless times by his peers, the media, and NBA fans as the best perimeter defender in the NBA. In an anonymous poll of 108 NBA players conducted by The Athletic in April of 2023, Holiday was voted as the best defender in the NBA by a wide margin and came in second as the league's most underrated player as well. So it's clear that his peers have a high level of respect for Drew Holiday's game, and it's fair to assume that many of them internally shake their heads a little bit when they find out that Holiday is going to be the one guarding them. Well, except for Jimmy Butler. Because the man took a page right out of his father MJ's, uh, I mean, uh, his alleged father MJ's trash talk playbook with the mind games he was playing on Holiday. Yeah, when you're Michael Jordan's son doing stuff like this on big playoff stages, it's in your DNA. According to tracking data provided by NBA.com, Butler scored a total of 66 points when Holiday was credited as the nearest defender in their first round series. I've never seen anyone cook Drew Holiday the way Jimmy Butler has this series. Neither have I, Silas. Neither have I. Even Drew Holiday's stand accounts had to own up to their cold takes. Why are you the way that you are? But sure, okay. Jimmy isn't the only player in NBA history to seek out the team's best defender and go right at him in big playoff moments, right? So we know that based on this alone, I'd be reaching to say that this is further proof of how Jimmy Butler resembles Michael Jordan. But what I can echo is this. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've said a lot about how I feel about Jimmy. I just respect him so much as uh, being a such a unique world-class elite competitor. You know, a lot of guys play the game of basketball in this league. He competes to win. That's a different language. Uh, and he's desperate and urgent and maniacal uh, and sometimes psychotic uh, uh, about the will to try to win. The word psychotic is not often used to describe the mindsets of NBA players. Sure, you know, there are many NBA greats with a tremendous will to win and are ultra competitive. But psychotic? That's only reserved for the MJs of the world. Oh, wait. And I quickly want to mention a lot of work was done to make this video a reality. So if you actually like it, like you actually like it, there's a subscribe button and a like button down below. And you know what to do. And if you want to support my channel even further, all right, let's pause for a quick shout out to Rakuten, who is not sponsoring this video, by the way. They're just the number one option for cash back with online shopping. I use Rakuten, whether it's through the website or the app, every time I shop online, and I have a link in the description down below. Now, I'm completely transparent. This is an affiliate link. I will get credit if you go to this link, but most importantly, you will get credit because when you spend $30, you'll get $30 back. And whatever store that you're shopping at, depending on the cash back that they're giving right now, you'll get that percentage back 
as well. It's legit, I've used this for years. Think about it like this, support my channel through the link by buying whatever you want online. It's a pretty good deal, right? Let's get back to the video. With the evident on-court similarities, Here's where this story takes an even more compelling turn. Back in 2016, a rumor spread online that Jordan has an unidentified son. A tipster claimed that Butler was the illegitimate son. The original post, which included a lot of typos, as you'd expect from website, discussion boards, and comment sections, stated, Jordan would not clam, he might claim, unwanted child in 1988 in fear of destroying marriage. Child took on mother's name of Butler. It was reported he paid mother off so he would not tarnish his public image and legacy and role model figure. After 13 years, mother kicked child out of household because payments stopped. Now, this looks enticing because some of it can actually be tied to events that have been confirmed by Butler himself, like his father abandoning the family when Jimmy was an infant, leaving his mother to raise him in the suburb of Tomball, Texas until he was 13. Jimmy got kicked out by his mom at the age of 13 as she told him, I don't like the look of you, you gotta go. This rumor has heated up even more due to the Chicago Bulls schedule from 1988. They played at Dallas on December 3rd and didn't play again until December 6th at home. So Jordan could have made his way to Houston, where it's a known fact that the nightlife be happening and the rest is history. But this is where the post falls apart though, because it states that Jordan would not clam, claim unwanted child in 1988. And Jimmy Butler III was born in Houston in 1989 to Jimmy Butler II and Londa Butler. So despite the obvious resemblance in their facial features, on-court game, and psychotic mentality to win, am I going to believe a tipster on the internet with some shaky dates, details, and improper grammar? No. No. And beyond that, do we really think that if Michael Jordan was actually Jimmy Butler's biological father, that Jimmy would have said to Chicago Magazine in 2015, I still talk to my family, my mom, my father. We love each other. It's never going to change. Would Jimmy and his mother have lived as poor of a life that they did if Michael Jordan was the one paying child support? And we know that child support doesn't last just 13 years, as according to the rapper formerly known as Kanye West. 18 years, 18 years, she got one of your kids, got you for 18 years. And do we really think that Jimmy would have signed to Jordan Brand and come out to MJ's flight school camp in 2015 and competed against the man in a shooting contest if he knew that this was the same man that abandoned him as an infant? Nah. I'm walking away from this rumor like Jimmy be walking away from on-court scuffles. So yes. Jimmy's game and mentality are a lot like MJ's, but at the end of the day, he ain't the man's son, and he ain't wearing the man's number. You can't wear a 23 here yeah. because of MJ. Yeah. Literally, Pat Riley retired it. Yeah. But I will say this, whenever I did come here, Pat told me that I could wear a 23, but I said, <laughs> so 22 it is. I'll be back with another episode of Topic Tackle coming soon. As always, stay solid, people.